figure out something unique on an end of a spectrum, not in the middle, play to an extreme, go all in, make sure you're passionate about it so it's real, and then you'll build a tribe of people that love it. And if you're doing a good job, a tribe of people that hate it too, and that's when you know you've hit a sweet spot. <laughs> Hey everybody, Roland Frazier here with Business Lunch and I am very excited to welcome a, a friend of mine and business partner, Rudy Maurer today. Rudy, who you may notice has a bit of a personal brand and I thought it'd be really fun if we could talk about how you've come about doing that, how you help other people because he works with you know Floyd Mayweather and everybody on the planet that you can think of and, um, and really... What is the value and why should everybody have a personal brand these days? Before we do that, I want to say, number one, hey, and welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. And two, would you give a little bit about your background and your business? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I speak on stage a lot and I always tell people that I have like this free part intro. So I'll give that real quick and then a bit of my bio. So three things I say on stage is number one, yes, my favorite color is red. So if you guys are streaming <laughs> in and watching this. You may be wondering. Number two, yes, I'm very hot in this big red fluffy coat. I do live in <laughs> Miami where it's, uh, you know, normally 80, 90 degrees. Uh, and number three, yes, the accent's British. So I sound far more intelligent than I really am. So <laughs> those three things you got to know about me. And, and yeah, the background is like most of us entrepreneurs, selling as a kid, born entrepreneur, hustling my way through it, uh, mastering social media and websites. I built my first website at 14 mastered kind of started social media at 18 so 14 years ago made my first million at 25 with social media built a fitness business to a few million then an agency um and now i we have a bunch of stuff which i'm sure i'll discuss but that, that's the summary of my journey moved to america nine years ago because i realized i had to be in the the right environment and the right rooms and it was a life-changing decision that paid off so that's a bit about me I love it. And, and um, I really like one of the things that that I've identified, I used to be behind the scenes in all the things that I was doing. And then a few years ago, decided that it was important to to build a personal brand. And so I'd love to talk about that a little bit, yep. because you really help people especially do that, right? Yeah. And I was exactly the same as you behind the scenes doing it for a few years. And then about five years ago, I saw what I think mean is the writing on the wall of the future of business. And I saw the personal brands taking off the influences. And I saw part, you know, people I was business partners with, like big influencers or agency clients making millions of dollars. And, and just because of their social presence. So I said, you know, I can either stay behind the scenes and partner with them and do it or I can become that and then own everything, right? So it's kind of like, you know, I'd sooner own everything than have to kind of partner and then battle heads and the pros and cons of working with big influencers, right? Right. I still kind of do now, but at least they're A-list celebrities. So you make way more money for the heartache and headache that you have. <laughs> so yeah, just like you, I saw the right on the wall. And now we work with big brands and A-listers and monetize their brand. Um, we help a ton of entrepreneurs build their personal brands and then the actual brand that they own as a business. And then obviously a part of my time is growing my personal brand because I see that as a big piece of the future. So for somebody that's thinking about getting into this um, and they're like, man, I just can't, I can't think about creating thousands of pieces of content every month and not having a life and all that. What do you say to those people and how do you when somebody comes to you that doesn't already have a brand, which I know doesn't happen as much now as it used to, um, what, what would your advice to them be? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are trying to build the brands now because they understand it's important. Most of them aren't doing a very good job of it. So it's kind of like a beginner still, but at least the intention's there, right? And that's the key piece of success is intention. So I would say the content isn't even that bad. Like, the, you know, me doing all the content, Gary Vee says it well, he says, create content that fits into your lifestyle and what you're passionate about. So I mean, it can be bad if it's super rigid stuff you don't like. But a lot of my stuff is, you know, my ideas that I'm passionate about that I teach my staff or I teach, right. you know, lecture my clients on and then I just reshoot it for everyone else. Right. And I batch it. I do 10 minutes in a car journey and I do 10 one minute videos and now with AI, it's easier than ever. Like I teach, you know, thousands of entrepreneurs how 
you can do so much with AI. You know, I taught the other day how, hey, do that 10 minute video. You've got 10 one minute clips now. Then you can transcribe that. You can have ChatGPT make that into 10 emails, make it into a free PDF ebook. And then you can take that 10 minute video and make it into a podcast. And then you can write 10 blog posts from it. And, and like, that's right, 10 minutes made into hours of content. So it's easier than ever before. Yeah. Um, really making the content isn't the hard part. What's hard is standing out because everyone's now doing it, right? And you have to create something unique, something that's controversial or entertaining or has a USP because if not, it's very hard to stand out. So how, what's the best way for people to go about doing that other than they've already lost the ability to do red because you own that? Yes. So that what, what should they do? Well, the good news is there are other colors out there, not just red. Right? <laughs> so there are some other color options. But no, on a serious note, um, I think you have to, I, am, I imagine content on a spectrum, right? And we're trained our entire life to play in the middle of everything. Our parents from childhood, even I remember it, and I had more unique parents. They were pro athletes traveling the world, not fitting into a norm by any means. But even then, they still say, oh, don't you fit in because you're going to get bullied as a child, right? Like if you do. So we grow up trying to fit in and creating amazing content and even amazing businesses is usually being on the other end of the spectrum where you do the opposite, right? Like you don't yeah. become Elon Musk saying, I want to build a civilization in the, in the, in space by fitting in, right? You'd get bullied for that idea in school as a child. So the content's the same. You can't do what everyone's doing. You can't fit in. You can't play it safe. You can't be neutral. And that was very hard for me because I came from a science background where you're trained to be very neutral. Like, oh, this supplement can work, but it also may not work. And who really knows? We still need, right? So I had to learn over years to be more like all in on my beliefs, right? And I think that's what a lot of people listen in. Obviously, there's a lot that goes into it, but one big takeaway is um, figure out something unique on an end of a spectrum, not in the middle, play to an extreme, go all in, make sure you're passionate about it so it's real, and then you'll build a tribe of people that love it. And if you're doing a good job, a tribe of people that hate it too, and that's when you know you've hit a sweet spot. I love that. I'm going um, to ask you to name drop for a second. Would you talk about some of the clients that you work with that you help with this kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, we work with A-list celebrities and influencers and, um, you know, Floyd Mayweather's one uh, client, for example. Um, there's many more, a few more on my Instagram that I'm not really allowed to name publicly. But yeah, Floyd Mayweather, um, some wrestlers, WWE wrestlers, famous wrestlers, you'll probably know some cat what I call cat category kings or um, people that have dominated industries that I really love to work with. People like Les Brown, one of the world's most famous motivational speakers. Um, Super Some Bowl champs from Shark Tank, right? Yeah, sharks from Shark Tank. Like, so we're always looking at, you know, we like a mix, right? It's just kind of like good, like investing in stock, right? We want to mix. So we want some super famous A-listers, some actors, some athletes. And then we want people that are like category uh, owners or kings or experts where you can really go deep in a category like speaking, right? Or motivation or finance or stock trading. So we try and create that diverse mix and there's pros and cons of both. So given that you're working with celebrities, you've got your own brand. I know you've got a TV show that you've been kind of playing with. Um, you've got uh, a lot of the stuff that you're doing with AI. Mixing all that together, what are you most excited about for the, the next 12 months? Yeah, I'm really excited about my personal brand because I got very intentional with it a year ago. We got to about 100, about, you know, we got to about 100 staff or uh, started this year, well, this past year actually now, so a year ago. And I, and we had a lot of the day to day running. So I really wanted to spend more time on the personal brand because um, I do think that's the future. And I've got the, um, like, I'm very lucky, like you, where we have the business acumen. So if you can build the personal brand, we already have the machine. So I say, hey, we're like an Amazon warehouse and we've actually built the warehouse. So now we just need to get the parcels running through it, right? The packages. Yeah. Whereas most influencers and celebrities are the exact opposite. They would have yeah. no clue how to build a warehouse or hire employees to work in that warehouse or to manage the taxes for the warehouse or the logistics, right? So that's when you become a rare breed when you can do both and you see a few successful people online that have a big company and have a big influence and they ch generally win, right? So for me, it's like, I've got the warehouse. Now I wanna grow my personal brand to fill the warehouse. 
Uh, the celebrities are, are really interesting because they're a bit of a wild card in just how successful they can be. But the cool thing is when you do find a successful one, because it has the name behind it, it can grow faster than a regular company. Um, and TV, I have a big Amazon Prime TV show coming out in April, um, and I'm trying to do finalize a Netflix one as well this year. So that's my big goal. Yeah.